The Honourable Member for Carleton. Canadians want their lives back, but yesterday they got no plan to fix the vaccine mess that this government has made. They want paychecks, but instead yesterday they just got more credit card bills. The national credit card will grow by $10,000 per man, woman and child in Canada. The deficit is eight times bigger than the previous all-time record, bigger than any other country in the G20. And yet, we won't have vaccines before billions of other people have them. The only way to get Canadians safely back to work and paychecks in their pockets is a vaccine. When, when will every Canadian who wants one have one? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the official opposition claims to believe in unions and in supporting union workers. So I'm sure the Conservatives will be interested in what the Teamsters had to say about our fall economic statement. And I quote, Today's numbers show that Ottawa is dead serious about supporting working class and middle class Canadians through this terrible crisis. The pandemic is sadly far from over and over the coming months continued government spending will be the only thing keeping millions of honest hard working families from total ruin. I couldn't have The honorable member for Carleton. Monsieur le président, la question c'était pas Mr. Speaker, the question was when? When will Canadians have access to a vaccination? The only way to deliver paychecks safely to people is if they're protected and vaccinated if they choose to be vaccinated. So, Mr. Speaker, with the highest deficit in the history of this country, the biggest credit card bill, will the government finally tell us when, when Canadians will have access to a vaccine. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Start by setting the record straight on what I said about vaccines this morning. Since the leader of the official opposition misconstrued my words, something which is becoming a bad habit of his. As Moderna's chief medical officer said this week, and I quote, Canada is in the front row on vaccines. I know that, and I know our rollout will be a success. And since the leader of the official opposition mentioned France, let me inform him that the EU said this week their regulators will not take a decision on Pfizer until December 29th, on Moderna not until July 12th. Speaker, it'll drive jobs out of the country. Our energy sector continues to suffer under this Liberal government. Just this month, Imperial Oil, Nova, Synovus, Husky Energy and Suncor announced 3,000 layoffs across Canada. That's more Canadians who need government assistance instead of supporting their families with well-paying jobs. This government has been punishing these sectors even before the pandemic, but they doubled down with carbon taxes, the clean fuel standard and the plastics issue. Mr. Speaker, at a time when Canadians need work more than ever. Why are the Liberals hurting these sectors instead of helping them? Honourable Minister. The Honourable Minister. Make sure that everyone hears it and that it's translated, interpreted correctly. So please use house approved microphones and headsets. Thank you. Coral que oral questions. Can Coral, yes. <laughs> it's a Freudian slip if I ever heard one. Oral questions. Question oral, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the general in charge of vaccine distribution in the United States said that all Americans will be vaccinated by June. The Prime Minister has suggested 
that only a few Canadians will be vaccinated by September. This morning, the Deputy Prime Minister said she hoped vaccinations would start by the summer. Why can't this government give Canadians any certainty on what date they will first have access to a COVID-19 vaccine? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, this government uh, worked hard throughout the summer and secured access to uh, uh, tens of millions of doses of vaccines for Canadians. Uh, we have the most diverse portfolio of potential vaccines of anyone because there is right now no effective vaccine against COVID-19. Uh, countries around the world are working to approve uh, many of the promising candidates, but we don't know which one is going to be most effective, which ones are going to arrive uh, quickly. That's why we secured as a government access to the largest range of vaccines and more vaccines per capita potentially than any other country. We are the Canadian... The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is responsible for presenting a comprehensive plan for vaccine distribution for Canadians. So far, all we get are Liberal buzzwords like a robust portfolio and no details. Seven months ago, the Prime Minister announced with great fanfare their joint venture on a vaccine with China. Now, the China deal fell apart at the end of the summer, and since then, they've been scrambling to come up with plans for a vaccine. Why did the Prime Minister put the lives of Canadians in the hands of communist China when it came to a COVID vaccine? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition shouldn't just make stuff up. The fact is that we secured contracts for vaccines in August. Uh, and right now, we are moving forward uh, with the approvals for four different vaccines, uh, Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, and now Johnson & Johnson at Health Canada, so that we can be sure that as soon as those vaccines arrive, we will be able to deliver them to Canadians. We know we need to get through this with vaccines, and that's why this government has worked hard to ensure vaccines are there for Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, it is time for the Prime Minister to be honest with Canadians. Last May, they announced a joint venture with China, the Can Sino deal. That was going to be their major vaccine distribution plan for Canada. That deal fell apart in August, Mr. Speaker, and then in September, they changed the regulatory structure and started dealing with Moderna and all the other companies. So my question for the Prime Minister, it is time for truth. Why did the Prime Minister put all of our vaccine eggs in the Communist China basket? The Honourable Prime Minister. Again, Mr. Speaker, that is simply not true. We worked as Canadians would expect us to, uh, to cover all the bases, to try and reach out to get the most diverse portfolio of vaccine candidates of any country around the world, and we did. Some of them didn't pan out, but many others have. That's why the four top vaccines around the world are now currently in regulatory approval from Health Canada, and we have secured tens of millions of doses of those vaccines. That's the work this government is doing. That's the plan we're delivering on. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Monsieur le Président. Mr. Speaker, France announced that it would be vaccinating its entire population by June. The same thing in the U.S. This morning, the Deputy Prime Minister announced that only a few Canadians will be vaccinated by the summer. The delays by this government are endangering people's lives. And Canadians want a plan. Where is the plan for the distribution of vaccines? Who will be vaccinated first and when? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we are working with the provinces and experts and have been since last spring. First of all, to sign vaccine contracts and to ensure an appropriate deliver delivery of vaccines as quickly as possible. We will continue to do so. As experts have said, we expect to have the majority of Canadians vaccinated before September 2021. We hope to have more done prior to that. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. 
Mr. Speaker, this week CNN disclosed that China hid the truth surrounding COVID, and the Liberal government is so pro-China that they decided to work with the country in order to, to uh, on a vaccine, and that uh, plan fell apart. Can the government and will the Prime Minister admit that we don't have a vaccination because of Canada's uh, partnership with China? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives once again are playing political games. No one in the world has an approved vaccine. We are all working on different uh, candidates, and there are four that are currently in the regulatory process with Health Canada. Yes, there was a partnership with CanSino that was extremely effective in the past on Ebola, and it was something we looked at. We have agreements with seven different com companies across the world. They will deliver vaccines for Canadians in the future. The Honourable Member for Belle Chambly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have a surprise for the government. We did some crunch some numbers, and health is a provincial jurisdiction. The Quebec and the provinces have put forth unanimous asks on issues with respect to the transfers, which are critical for taking care of the most vulnerable people. Now, the Prime Minister has postponed his meeting with the provincial premiers until December 10th, and it's really good because after that, the Parliament won't even be sitting. So, what proposals does the Prime Minister have for the provinces? Is he going to go there empty handed? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. For 10 months now, we have been working hand-in-hand hand with the provinces to help them with their health systems, be it uh, through the Red Cross, with the Canadian Armed Forces, the billions of dollars that we transferred to help the provinces with their health systems during the pandemic. We will continue to do so. At the same time, I will be speaking with the uh, premiers and not with the uh, uh, political party leaders. The Honourable Member. True, we're just elected officials in the House of Commons. Now, the Prime Minister keeps saying, look, I've respected provincial jurisdiction. However, this morning, the minister from Quebec, with respect to national standards, said it was unacceptable for Quebec and the provinces. With respect to daycare and pharma care, he said he would be uh, op seeking to opt out with compensation. So that's not working exactly the way the Prime Minister w wants us to believe. We're talking about health and human lives. Does the Prime Minister acknowledge, uh, will the Prime Minister acknowledge that he will uh, authorize this uh, opting out? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, there is no jurisdiction when it comes to the dignity and the lives of our seniors. We're going to all work together to protect our seniors. What we saw in the spring across the country, including in Quebec, was unacceptable. What happened in the long-term care facilities, that's why the federal government worked with the province, with all provinces, so that they could take control over the system and be there to help seniors. We will always work to protect seniors, regardless of where they live across the country, because that's what Canadians expect us to do. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. We all know that seniors have been particularly hard hit by COVID-19, not just because they're vulnerable, but also because of the isolation. Many seniors have seen their programs cancelled and they can't come together and, and uh, connect the way they usually were able to. Now, we know that the medical experts are saying that there's enough COVID vaccines to cover about 3 million Canadians. There are over 4.5 million seniors over the age of 70. So what's the plan? Which seniors will get the vaccine and which will have to wait? Right, Honourable Prime Minister. 
Mr. Speaker, every step of the way, we have worked with health experts and scientists to determine the prioritization of vaccines on the rollout. We need to get to the most vulnerable. We need to get to our frontline health care workers. Uh, and that is exactly what we're going to do. Uh, we're working with the provinces on establishing that list. But I can tell you uh, that the vaccines that are coming in are going to go to those people who most need them most urgently. Uh, and because Canada has secured tens of millions of doses of the vaccines, uh, we will ensure that everyone gets vaccines in the coming months. Member for Burnaby South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Shimadawa First Nations community in northern Manitoba is faced with a COVID-19 outbreak, and they are in urgent need of help. They're already dealing with a housing crisis and TB. Like many other remote and northern Indigenous communities, they have underfunding, under-resourcing, and a lack of access to basic things like the internet to deal with. The chief has asked for military to be sent to the nation, First Nation, to provide testing, tracing, and safety measures. Will the Prime Minister heed the call of the chief and send in the military supports that they need? Honourable Prime Minister. From the very beginning of this pandemic, we've worked closely with Indigenous communities and Indigenous leadership across this country to ensure that they have everything they need. Uh, we saw the first wave uh, hit far less hard in uh, Indigenous communities than in many other communities because of the leadership of Indigenous uh, uh, communities and the partnership that we've been able to establish with them. We will continue to work uh, with local and territorial governments as well as uh, remote communities to ensure that everything they have, they need. Unprecedented deficit and is, and I quote Emmanuel La Traverse, a reflection of the Trudeau government's ideology. It's certainly an electoral deficit. Canadians want concrete anchors, answers. Not a list of election promises, it looks like a Christmas list. When will we see a vaccination plan? When will we see a clear plan? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, when will the Conservatives have a financial plan, a clear and defined plan? On Sunday at Tout le monde en parle, the leader of the opposition assured Canadians that he would provide the same level of support that we have provided under a Conservative government. So what do the Conservatives really believe? Le député de Mégantic-Lérable. The Honourable Member. Mr. Speaker, the economic statement is uh, disappointing. There's a lack of certainty around vaccines. There's lack of clarity for budgets. It shows a flagrant lack of skills for economic recovery. And above all, it shows the Liberals have lost control over public finances. The minister says she put in place fiscal safeguards. But she's careful not to protect uh, Canadians from her reckless spending. When will we have a plan with dates? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. Allow me to remind the member opposite that our approach has already enabled us to create jobs. Many of the jobs were recovered, jobs lost during the pandemic. Compared to, to the United States, we're doing far better. Canada, in the third quarter, had the highest rate of growth. And that is a success story, Mr. Speaker. With the issue of the ancillary events and being paid to work corporate events for an organization, um, something that you would part of your investigation. For Calgary Nose Hill. Mr. Speaker, today the Prime Minister said that it would be September before mo most Canadians would be able to get a COVID-19 vaccine. But the Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs said early January and then just January. And today the Deputy Prime Minister said 
before the summer. So my question is to the health minister. Is she content to keep letting her colleagues give their best guess on a very important issue to Canadians, or will she finally take responsibility and give us an actual date? Mr. Health. Step of the way, my colleagues and I have worked incredibly hard, hand in glove with provinces and territories to A, secure the best portfolio of vaccines in the world, B, to secure the most doses per capita in the world, and C, to strengthen the regulatory process at Health Canada to give them every opportunity, every, every resource they need to accelerate their work. Mr. Speaker, Canadians should be proud and confident we have a plan, and they too will get vaccinated when the vaccines are proven to be safe and effective. Well, member for Calgary Nose Hill. So the answer is no. So the Prime Minister said September for vaccine delivery. The Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs said January or early January. The Minister of Procurement said the new year. The Deputy Prime Minister said before summer. And today the Health Minister said early 2021. COVID-19 is a deadly disease that is crippling our economy. Why is the health minister content to keep allowing her and her colleagues to play vaccine date bingo with Canadian lives? Well, minister. I'd invite the member opposite to get a briefing on vaccine work, as I've repeatedly offered her on testing. In fact, her remarks indicate that she doesn't understand how many moving parts there are in vaccine delivery. But I want to say this to Canadians. Minister, I'm, I'm very interested in hearing the response, just like I'm interested in hearing the questions. Just when it gets loud, it makes it very difficult for everyone to hear. So I just want to remind everyone that we want to hear the answers and the questions. I'm, I'm sure the honourable members want to hear what I'm saying, correct? <laughs> I'll just wait for him to stop. Okay, good. We're done? Thank you. Oh, uh, okay, Madam Minister, you can continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I was saying, look, we have the best portfolio of vaccines in the world. We have the more doses per capita in the world. We're working hand in glove with companies like Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca. In fact, we were the first country in the world to receive applications from the four leading companies. You know why, Mr. Speaker? Because our Health Canada regulators are gold standard. The world looks to Canada for safety and efficacy, and we are here for Canadians. The Honourable Member for Shefford. Mr. Speaker, in the midst of a pandemic, how can you write a 259-page economic statement without mentioning seniors? There's not a measure in there for them when they're the most affected by the pandemic. No. Season greetings by Canadians or Canadians. Today's Space Cafe. Have a good day.